Hello, my friends. It's so nice to see you again. How are you? So today we're going to be looking at IELTS speaking part three. We'll be looking at the the new 2020 questions from January to April. So if you're doing the test in the coming months, you should watch this to get some ideas, some language, and some tips. Okay. If you're sitting comfortably, let's begin. Right then. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Keith, and I run a website called IELTS Speaking Success, here to help you speak better English, give better answers, and get a higher score in the IELTS speaking test. Today we're going to be looking at IELTS speaking part three. Just before I begin, let me remind you that if you want to follow an online course with me, I do have a course on Udemy, IELTS Speaking Success Get a Band Seven Plus, which will help you level up and get a band seven or above. If you want one-to-one -one classes with me, I teach on iTalki. All of the information is down below in the links. So let's begin. Part three. So part three. What happens? It's based on the part two topic. So in part two, you talk about a particular event or activity or a person you know. Then in part three, we take that topic and develop it. So in part three, you will be asked maybe five or six questions over five minutes. Oh, so that's about one minute a question, right? So you're giving quite long answers here, maybe up to a minute. So you need to develop your answers in part three. It's really important, and a very simple way to do that is to give your opinion, say why, and give an example. Easy as that. Opinion, why, example. Now. I'm going to be talking about lots of ideas from different questions today, but that's a very simple thing to follow. And just be aware that you're developing and digging deeper. So the examiner is testing your ability to talk about a wider range of subjects at a deeper level. We're using here what are called、um, HOTS. Hots, as in hot, right? Higher order thinking skills, and that's your ability to not just Talk about you, but to talk about bigger picture things, anal analyzing, evaluating, justifying, speculating. All of these are kind of higher order thinking skills, and you need the language to be able to to do this, to talk in depth about these topics. So today I'll be showing you how you can do that and some language to do it. Now, let's talk about、um, let's talk about what let's talk about the questions. So, in part two, you get a topic, and then part three takes the main idea and develops that topic. So, just so you know, the examiner in IELTS follows a script. They have the questions that they must ask, and they follow them. But in part three. They begin with the script, but they can also add their own questions. They can follow your conversation and add different questions to test and probe you, to kind of push you a little bit. So that's good, but it also means a lot of questions we don't know. But that's fine because we're not here to memorize answers, right? We are here to get ideas and language, so you can speak flexibly and with confidence on a number of subjects. So, part two, right? There are about I don't know fifty topics. So, if in part three there are maybe five questions, I mean we're looking at like three, two hundred and fifty, or three hundred different possible questions. There's no way you can prepare all of those questions, and it would be a waste of time. So don't bother. Let's use a different strategy, right? This is my strategy. Look more carefully at the question types, because what you're going to notice is that similar question types come up again and again and again. And if you're familiar with the question types, you'll know what kind of language to be using, and you can talk about it.、Um, 
you will need lots of ideas, but hey, we're going to look at that. And that's why you're studying. That's why you're listening and reading to so much English, right? Okay. So, so I'm going to begin taking one particular topic. Um, I'll show you the part two question and then how that's developed in part three and the kind of questions that come up. I'll be looking at some different topics, but clearly not all of them. There are too many. But let's begin with this question. Describe a job you would not like to do in the future. Now that's part two, right? So what do you think part three is going to be talking about? Well, yes, right? It's going to be talking about jobs and the future. OK, so there'll be different questions that come up. I'm going to look at some questions that have come up. These are not exact because when candidates tell us the questions that they've done, obviously their memory is not perfect. Um, and also, as I said, the examiner may make up new questions. But these are the kind of questions you'll be getting. What kind of jobs do young people like to do nowadays? Which is more important, earning money or having an interesting job? Why do people travel out of their hometowns to look for jobs? Do you think the jobs people do in the future will change? Have attitudes to jobs and the workplace changed in recent years? What are the psychological effects of work? What motivates young people in the workplace? So here are the kind of questions that you may get. Now, we're looking at jobs, but I want you to really focus on the question type. So let me explain. What kind of jobs do young people like to do nowadays, right? So here, um, this kind of question may come up for different topics. What kind of music do young people like to listen to nowadays? What kind of news do people like to get nowadays? What kind of films do people like to wa uh, watch nowadays? Can you see how this type of question, and once you understand the type, you can then use it on all different topics. So what is the examiner looking at and what can you say? What kind of jobs do young people like to do? Well, you're talking about maybe in your country or maybe worldwide. You're maybe speculating a bit. So it's, I think they do that. Possibly in many countries, it's this. Um, and you're talking about here different kinds. When it comes to jobs, there are probably two aspects to look at, right? There's the job, different kinds. So maybe we say, well, computing is popular nowadays, or IT jobs have become very fashionable, or businessmen and businesswomen. A lot of people want to become business people, or it's kind of trendy to be an entrepreneur or a solopreneur. There's a new trendy word, a solopreneur. Somebody works for themselves. So we're looking at kinds of jobs, but also kind of jobs could be talking about the way that people work. So maybe we talk about people want the kind of job where they have more independence, where they have flexible working hours, sometimes called flexi time. Younger people want flexi time. Um, they want an attractive job. Consulting is becoming more popular. So rather than people working for the same company for 50 years, 50? No, 30 years. Um, they become a consultant and they work for themselves, but for different companies. So the way we work, that's becoming popular. So you could talk about different kinds of job in that sense. With this question as well, you may want to touch on the area of generations, work generations, right? Now, are you familiar with Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z? Generation X, I think, is my generation, right? The kind of the born in the 70s or the 80s. Um, and it's the, the, the people who are, well, <laughs> you can go on the websites and check Generation X to see the kind of personality or working style. And then you've got Generation Y. 
sometimes called the millennials, people born in the 80s and the 90s, and their working style is a bit different and their demands and expectations are a bit different. And in the 2000s and on, you've got, surprise, surprise, how original, Generation Z. How do they do that? X, Y, Z. Not very original, but sometimes people call them snowflakes. Oh, dear. Because (laughs) they're often seen as being a bit airy-fairy, a bit soft, and wanting everything done for them specially. I don't know if that's true, but your Generation Z is another. So you could talk about the generations, right? What kind of jobs do young people like to do? Well, you know, Generation X like to have job security and do a job where they can progress up the career path or go up the corporate ladder. Um, Whereas Generation Y or Generation Z... They're much more independent. They want flexi time. They want a job where they can be in control and have autonomy over their own work. Kinds of jobs. Let's move on. Now, the next question is another typical question type. It's an A, B question, right? Which is more important, earning money or having an interesting job? Which is more Im- no, which is more important, or which is better, using your mobile phone or using the internet? Which is better, local news or international news? A lot of these questions come up, and a really a good approach with these either or questions is to show off your comparisons, show off because you want to show off your language, right? So you could just talk about one. You could just say earning money is much more important because we all need to pay the rent, right? Um, You know, lots of people have a mortgage. They need money to live. Boom, simple. But how much richer it will be if you can say, well, on the one hand, right, earning money is really important, but it's much more important to have an interesting job. An interesting job is much more valuable because that gives you satisfaction, a feeling of reward, and it will motivate you. Maybe you can live a happier life. So here you can see you're comparing A and B. It's much better. It's much more valuable and so richer language, right? So this is a great opportunity to talk about comparisons, okay? Good. Let's talk about another question type. Here, why do people travel out of their hometowns to look for jobs? Why do people blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, this question is interesting um, because it assumes people travel out of their hometowns to look for jobs. It takes that as a fact. Why do people do that? You can agree with that and talk about why, well, why people do it. But if you disagree, you can say, well, actually, I don't think people are traveling from their hometown to look for jobs. I think most people stay in their hometown. Okay. Um, When we look at why questions, why do people do something? You're really speculating because I don't know why they do it. What do I know? I'm me. Other people, I don't know why they do that. So it is really speculating. So the language of I suppose or it might be that, well, maybe the reason they do that is why do people travel out of their hometowns? It could be that they are looking for a better job. It may be that there are no job opportunities in their hometown. Okay, So that language of speculation is really useful here. What about the ideas? I think why people leave their hometown, their hometown is often a town, right? Small or a village. And there is a migration from here to here, from the countryside to the city. We talk about the urbanization, right? People are moving. There's an influx of people. Nice word. 
just careful with the mic. Influx is a, a movement into a place. So there's an influx of people into the cities or a migration of people from the countryside to the big cities. And this is, this is happening, I think. Why do people do it? Well, possibly there might be better jobs in the city. Um, it could be that people are looking for a better quality life in the city. Uh, it may be that there are more educational opportunities for their children. Um, I suppose people are looking for higher salaries, and that's why they go into the bigger cities. So you could be talking about that. For young people, millennials or generation X, Y, Z, generation Z, the snowflakes. You're not snowflakes. We're not snowflakes. I'm not a snowflake. Um, maybe they're going into the city, maybe they're migrating into the city because they find there is a more engaging and active social life. Younger people, right? We're looking for a, an active social life, more restaurants and cafes to hang out in and to meet other people and socialise, to have an active social life. Social, socialise. Remember, we always talk about word families. It's really good to do. Social, socialize. Nice. Okay. Um, also, on this question, you're talking about the reason why, and there's all these positives, right, of the big city. It can be good to talk about the negatives. So people are moving into the city despite the fact there's overcrowding. Despite the fact. So there's a negative, but even though there's a negative, they still go. So there's a migration into the cities despite the fact there is overcrowding. There's an influx of people to the big cities looking for jobs despite the fact house prices are so high. House prices are rocketing. <whistles> house prices are soaring like a bird. So people are moving into the big cities despite the fact there's so much competition. Right. Lots of language, lots of ideas for that question. So the why question, speculation. Let's look at another question. Do you think jobs, the jobs people will do in the future will change? OK, so we're talking here about something in the future changing. And this comes up a lot. Do you think... Um, education will change in the future? Do you think the way we access news will change in the future? Do you think music will change in the future? Okay, so this will change in the future. Again, you're looking at speculation. I think it might, it could, it will, it will probably, it could possibly, da, 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 da. So the language of speculation here is really useful. So do you think jobs, the jobs people will do is going to change in the future? Notice it might be is going to or will. It's all in the future. Um, well, oof, I suppose so, because I think with, you know, our technological revolution, um, a lot more jobs are technology focused. So jobs around computing, coding and IT are going to become more popular. I suppose more people will need to learn coding skills. Um, and there are lots of jobs that actually haven't been invented yet because of the pace of change of technology. And so certainly jobs will be, diff will be different, but maybe we don't know what the jobs will be. What could those jobs be that we can't even imagine yet? I can't imagine. Can you imagine what the jobs will be? <laughs> what will the jobs be in the future? I don't know. I suppose there'll be more jobs around robots. Robots may take over some jobs, so there'll be more automation of jobs. Um, robots may play a part in jobs like teaching or in the restaurants. Um, I know there's, for example, a restaurant near me where they have robots that serve the food. 
it's not like a human robot. They're little plates that move and they come around the tables and they deliver the food to the table. So the automation of certain tasks, especially routine tasks, will mean the jobs in the future will change. Automation's a nice word. You know automatic, automatically, the automation to make things automatic. So that's going to change in the future. Great. Let's move on. Now let's have a look at the next question. How have attitudes to jobs and the workplace changed in recent years? So this, again, is a very common question. How has something changed in recent years? And here, a good idea is just to go to say, in the past, it was like this. Things have changed. And now it's like this. It's a simple three steps that help you think as you go. So talking about attitudes to jobs in the workplace, it occurs to me that different people have different attitudes. So, for example, remember the generations, Generation X, their attitude to job security was they expected a job for many, many years, maybe for life. Generation Y were much more flexible and I think Generation Z actually don't expect the same job security. Their attitude is that they will probably change job every year or every six months. So their attitude to job security and stability has changed. Um, I think also attitudes and expectations of the reward are different. So maybe in the past, in the past, people expected a solid salary and some fringe benefits, maybe, um, like a pension fund, social security contributions. Things have changed. And now the younger generation, maybe their expectation of rewards is different. They expect not only a salary, but a wider range of fringe benefits, joining the gym, crash care for their babies or children, um, Maybe having lunches included, a lunch, uh, a work canteen like Google's fantastic. You get free lunches and smoothies and it's all very, very, it's very different, right? So expectations on the workplace, right? Traditionally, my father probably expected an office where there's a chair, a closed office and his desk. No computer in those days, lots of paper and pens. But now, a lot of the younger generation, maybe the uh, the Gen Z, would expect the Google scenario, right? Comfy chairs, open spaces, games rooms, breakout rooms, cafeteria, coffee on tap, all of these things, the expectations of the workplace have changed. I think a lot of managers now who are not hierarchical, right? I'm up here. You're down there. They're not hierarchical. They are flat. And so they see less hierarchy. And so they don't have a closed office space. They work in open spaces and they work at the same level as many other employees in the company. So certainly attitudes have changed to jobs in the workplace. You can talk about different kinds of people, generations, you know, throw in the word millennials, Generation Z snowflakes, if you like. Great. You can talk here about attitudes. Oh, another thing that I just remembered is attitudes to diversity have changed. So, um, and I'm thinking particularly about, uh, well, sexual orientation, gender, male and females. You know, the, the attitude now is that a lot more women are in the workplace and will be working. Whereas before, gosh, there was um, th there was not equality of pay, not equality of conditions for men and women. And that attitude has definitely changed in most countries. Um, certainly in my country, it's getting better. Still a long way to go, but the, the attitude towards diversity and equality is certainly a different thing that's changed. Something you could talk about. <laughs> now, next question. 
What are the psychological effects of work? Well, <laughs> there's good and there's bad. There's good in that the psychological effects are that work can be very rewarding, especially if it's challenging and you're supported, you can be successful and it's rewarding. Rewarding makes you motivated, animated and can be very positive for your self-confidence and your self-esteem, right? So that's a positive thing. I think very positive psychological effects. At the same time, there are clearly downsides. Downsides is a nice word. Downsides, disadvantages, negative effects, right? Um, work can have a detrimental effect on your mental health. So if it's too challenging and you're, there's a lot of stress and you have no work-life balance, right? Work-life, work-family it should be, but we say work-life balance or work-family balance, too much stress, you're stressed out and that has a really, you know, detrimental effect on your mental health. And I think a lot of employees and workers around the world suffer from this. Globalization, there are huge demands on people to perform and be productive and efficient. And we almost lose perspective of time and time for ourselves and our families. And so, yeah, it can have a negative effect on mental health. <laughs> I'm on a rant, aren't I? I'm complaining again. We need a, a more balance. <clears throat> so I think I'm looking at my notes here. Mental health is, is, is a, a downside that certainly part if we're talking about psychological impact. Okay, <laughs> rant finished. Next question. One more on this topic. What motivates young people in the workplace? Now, again, this is a kind of, <laughs> I don't know, question, um, because I can speak for me, um, but don't just speak personally about you. What motivates me? I think you have to take it a bit wider. So you can begin with me, right? As far as I'm concerned, for me personally, I reckon a big motivation is uh, you know, a good working environment or the fringe benefits, the pension, the, <laughs> the Google cafeteria, um, the gym membership, right? But you need also to develop and say, and I think possibly it may be for many young people in my country, they are motivated by the money, the salary, the commission they can make, the working environment, the colleagues, the free lunch, the, the wide variety of fringe benefits, nice, fringe benefits, those extra benefits we get. Um, maybe it's a gym membership fee. Maybe it's maybe they're motivated by having a kind of a social network where they can work with friends. Or maybe they're motivated because they can play table tennis in between meetings. Whatever it may be. So don't just talk about you. Take it wider and talk about what you think um, motivates young people. Talk about your country, right? And give one or two examples. It's always good in part three to give examples, right? For a lot of, you know, for example, I notice in a lot of startup companies, um, they are, they have games rooms because a lot of the employees, whether they're generation Y or Z, are gamers, and they're really into games and that motivates them. And it's they see it as a skill development. So they like to have games rooms and that kind of fringe benefit motivates a lot of people. <laughs> okay, so we've talked a lot here about work, jobs in the future, a lot of different questions. Remember to focus on the question type. I'll be doing more videos in the future. Keep your eyes open on different topics in part three, not just for the topic and the language, but to get used to these question types. If you like this video, please do share it with your uncle, aunt, nephew, niece, anybody who might be interested. Um, subscribe over here. There are links down below if you're interested in my courses or classes. I'd love to work with you and be your personal coach and tutor. 
In the meantime, have a fantastic day. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.